We are, we are live. What's up, Stu Smith? Hello, Jim Edwards. Um, we're live and we're not in any kind of jail or trouble with any of these uh, big tech megalomaniacal individuals that uh, dominate our lives in post-apocalyptic fiction and my favorite movies. So good for us. Look at us. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <coughs> um, Stu Smith, you know that we are finishing up our Write Your Book Challenge, this this latest iteration of it. I know you know that. you, uh, As the Brits say, you kind of skived off on this one. You were like, well, nah, I, Jim, I, I'm not writing I, a book. I refuse to be bullied into writing another book. <laughs> that, last, done, that last one, you, you bullied me into writing one. Uh, I've, yeah. I've done that to you so many times. I'm such a terrible person. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Getting you to act in your own best interest. Well, my latest book's published now, Stu. Sweet. And uh, it's going to be, it's up there in Kindle. And uh, it'll be up there in paperback there. I had to make a little adjustment to the cover. But Stu Smith, I want you to know something else. My book is published as an audio book on Audible. It's my first one. My Did first you do both? audio book on Audible. Huh? Did you do both? The Did um the printed version and the uh, audible as oh, well. Oh, it's going to be available as Kindle, paperback and audible by the end of today or end of tomorrow. Nice. Now, what's the question you should be asking me about that audio book, Stu? I just finished the book. Literally just finished the book a, a day and a half ago. Put the final uh put the final <clears throat> stuff on it. Well, I remember when you were making the audio book because I was involved. No, 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 no. That was oh. just the interview. I, it was oh, a whole rest of the book got written by me and using the AI tools and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So aren't you wondering how I was able to get the audio book done so fast? I, I want to hear. How'd you do it? They got a button you can push. I published my book. And there's a button inside of the KDP with the listing of the book that says publish your book as an audio book using virtual voice. Love it. I chose the voice and they created the audio book version of it. Now I'm thinking this is going to suck, you know, welcome to the story selling secret by Jim Edwards. This I'm going to try that. Book that is, Oh, well, there's some caveats to it, but um, like all your old books aren't automatically eligible. Um, so if I republish an old <clears throat> book, can I, I don't work for Amazon. Oh, okay. I literally, I, I think so. Okay. I, 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 I could, I wouldn't imagine why not, I'm gonna, but I'm going to try, but here's the thing. It doesn't suck. And I want to show it to you and let you listen to a little bit. I won't make you listen to a whole bunch of it, but I want you to listen to like the first minute or so. And it's freaking crazy, man. Um, That's cool. So to share audio, share a tab or screen. In oh, okay. Here we go. All right. So here it is up on Amazon. It shows the Kindle and the audio book version are available. So this is the title of it, The Story Selling Secret. And you can read a sample or you can listen to a virtual voice sample. Again, I won't make you listen to a whole bunch, but I'll play it for like a minute so you can really get a feel for it, okay? Okay. This title is narrated with virtual voice, computer-generated narration for audiobooks. The Story Selling Secret by Jim Edwards. Introduction, the story of one simple tweak that skyrocketed my sales by 250%. I'll never forget the day my life changed forever. It was at a conference in Boulder, Colorado, and I was there with my boss who needed me to speak in front of the audience because he couldn't. But I was there as much to learn as I was to deliver a talk. Little did I know that I was about to learn the most profitable lesson of my life. The turning point came when I was listening to a speaker talk about how to write a one-page sales letter. 
These are those big, long, scrolling sales letters that go on and on that people complain about, saying that nobody buys from those. The speaker gave the basic breakdown for how to structure the sales letter, and... Dude! That is awesome. And I'm, I have to say, it was perfectly timed. You know, it was very wise the way they did that. You know, I mean, you just went to the title, and then you automatically hooked me with that first sentence. I, that's what I'm saying. I mean, well, that's... I wrote the books, too. I mean, well, it, I know that. You know... <laughs> But, you know, sometimes you can hem and haw before you get to the first sentence. You know, you can like say, here's, the, you know. <laughs> it's reading what I wrote, dude. Anyway, awesome. I'm like, I was blown away because imagine where this technology is going to be in a year or two. Mm. So, it, it, it where it is now, but imagine where it's going to be in a year or two. And I, and I want to get on my little soapbox here for a second. Okay, the world of AI. I mean, hell, it's in the name. Copyingcontent.ai. Everything you think you know about creating content and what's and writing sales copy and doing everything doesn't matter anymore. It's all data. It's all data driven. It's the cloud is now the collective consciousness, Stu Smith. Huh. And so the only thing that makes you different, and I'm going to keep harping on this until the day I die or I hang up my cleats and I'm not doing this anymore. The only thing that makes you different is your soul, your ability to tell stories, to express your opinions, to add uniqueness to all this stuff and to breathe lessons and life into it. If you don't learn how to do that, your competitors are going to eat your lunch because you are just going to be drowning in a sea of slightly above average content created by chat GPT. Mm. So uh, this, I, my mind is blown because let me tell you what's coming next, man. Full motion video is already here to a degree, but to a degree that you will th just will make your mind explode. Hmm. what we're going to be able to create. Nice. And the only way you're going to differentiate, because think about it, anything you can think up that's cool, anything that you can do that's like, oh, this is new, some chucklehead somewhere else with a computer, either one house over or 10,000 miles away, can instantly duplicate by just pointing it at a chat GPT or an AI tool and say, make me one of them too. And so you, it's like Etsy. Yeah. You, know, you see, if you ever seen on Etsy, somebody comes out with something cool, they sell a bunch of it. And within a, a week, you got Chinese knockoffs, you know, the, 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 the Chinese communist party is profiting off of that with slave labor. Mm. Yeah. I said it. So <laughs> it is true. <laughs> my point is that the AI stuff is so incredible that you got a choice. You can either run and hide from it, ooh, ish, 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 whatever. Or you can say, you know what? This is a crazy tool. I can go out and cut trees down in the forest with a freaking laser beam. So anyway, just yeah. just blew my mind. Blew nah, my man, mind. Nah, man, that's impressive. That. That's yeah. impressive. I'm, I'm that, excited about that one. because That intonation of that voice? Very good. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, and it wasn't um, wasn't monotone at all. No, you, you know, and in fact, it but it wasn't over the top either. Right. It was it was perfect. Yeah, it was mostly perfect. Mm, I don't know. I there was one perfect. where it was those long sales letters. It was like I I caught that one little thing. It wasn't you know anyway. It should have mm. been sales letters, but ah, gotcha. I guess if I'm going to complain too much, read your own dang book. Is that? <laughs> Hey, man, you just got a book read to you by pushing a button. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. And oh, oh, here's the other thing. Free. Uh, think about that. If you had to hire voice talent to do something, that stuff's not cheap. Mm -mm. Number two, if you're going to do it yourself, you have to sit there and do it and not screw it up. And then you have to make sure it's at the right levels. It's the right sample rate. It's it all that. Think, think about that too. The amount of time, 
energy, effort, displacing an entire industry of low-level book voiceover stuff. I mean, you talk about disruptive, and they didn't charge me a dime for it. Well, they're going to make more money because you have that audiobook. Because what do people do? They buy both. Because I don't have time to sit here and read it, but I have 45-minute drive I got to go do. I can catch up on the book. Well, you had time for me to sit there and read it to you, but that's just a special thing. Well, no, no, no. It's just like, you know, when you buy a book, I got like, I got to read this, you know, 15 minute chunks, you know, whereas I can do it in a car for an hour's drive if I need to. I know I was goofing around because I read you the book. Yeah, I know that that was the goof. Um, But that that's the other thing is it's like we, we take we, we take for granted that that like that was free. Oh, yeah, they'll just do it. It's you think about 10 years ago multi i won't hazard to say billion dollar industry of voiceovers and all that other stuff man if you're making your money with your voice mm, they you eh. know what they need to do jim what add some soul to their voice <laughs> this is true if you if you can sound just like barry white you got a <laughs> you got a chance james Earl jones you might uh-huh. you might you might have a job there you go so um what are we talking about today, Stu? What's well, we're going to get attention for your book. I think an audio book is one way to get attention for your book. That Absolutely. Sure. Um, so why is promoting your book so important? Well, here's the thing. If you don't promote your book, nobody's going to see it. And here's the other thing. Even with Amazon, everybody thinks, oh, okay, well, I can put my book up on Amazon and Amazon's going to you know, people can find it on Amazon. It's books are getting so crowded on Amazon now to a degree. If you don't prime that pump yourself, Amazon doesn't really push you. Amazon pushes books that people are buying. And in order for them to push a book that people are buying, you need to prime that pump somewhat to get it going. Now, you don't have to go sell a gajillion of them, but you need to market your book yourself. And that means going out to friends and family and contacts and your social media and other stuff. It's yeah, like I mean, a- everything that you do should say Jim Edwards, author. Right? Of, you know, yeah. Yeah, author of blank. And, you know, whenever it's a byline, it's a part of your bio on your business card. You know, your email everything signature you file. Do, you are constantly pumping that you are an author of this book or books, you know, to get more attention to it. Absolutely. And here's the thing. If you don't do it in the traditional publishing world, now the first question that any agent, any publisher asks you is how big is your platform? How many social media followers do you have? How many people do you have on your email list? How many people do you, you know, what, whatever it is, how many Instagram followers do you have? And if you don't have a platform, they don't want anything to do with you because in the end, authors sell books and publishers and Amazon print books. And in the case of Amazon, they don't even print books. They transmit electrons to their own devices that people yeah. pay for. So yeah. it's important. You got to promote it or no one's ever going to buy it. It's like building a billboard and hiding it in your basement Um, well there's a lot of ways to get attention for your book i my way of doing it is constantly tagging products in my social media posts writing about products in my social media articles newsletters you know so it's it's a near daily project for me If not daily, two or three times a day, even. So especially if you can link your store to, uh, to your social media. Absolutely. That's, I mean, for me, that's my number one, two and three ways of getting attention for my book. How about you? So I'm going to see if I can get my little thingy here to zoom in. Um, Doesn't want to zoom in. Stuff's not working the way it's supposed to, but that's okay. It's technology. Um, 
the way I always look at it as far as getting exposure for anything is it comes down to basically four categories of doing it. Okay. You can, you can buy exposure. So that would be stuff like ads. You can borrow exposure. So that would be stuff like an affiliate program, you know, send me the traffic and I'll pay you if I make a sale. Um, you can trade which trading is i think something that people have kind of a uh confusion level about as far as um trying to get the dang camera to respond but trading you know you're like oh i gotta have a list if i get somebody with a list to trade with me like you know i'll i'll mail my list you mail your list that kind of thing and yeah that can work that way but you also are basically trading content for exposure so when you go on somebody's podcast the reason they're having you on their podcast is probably not because they're it's not completely because they're lonely but it's because they need content in order to have people tune into their podcast and so like you and I have this podcast, you have your own podcast, you have a couple of things, you, you do a bunch of stuff and you get new ideas, you get new people, you get new content that you trade for exposure. So you can trade your content, you can trade ideas, and this is the one that you can leverage the, the most without having really any kind of a platform. You just have to have a good message and a good idea and some engaging content. And most importantly, a great story. Because what do the most podcast episodes start with? Hey, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey. The reason why we have Stu Smith here today is because he's got an incredible story. And you can see these people, especially the ones that have an amazing story, start popping up everywhere. Hmm. All of a sudden, they're on this podcast and like, hey, you've got an amazing story. Hey, I've, for those of you who don't know your story, can you share it with us? And they start having that person, their stock and trade is literally their story. So an example, um, a guy that I've um, done some coaching stuff with, I actually have paid him money to find out what he's doing and some other stuff. It was a guy that was a Navy SEAL for seven and a half years, got chucked out for doing PEDs and getting in trouble and a whole bunch of stuff, then was out for a couple of years, got into other issues and decided he was going to turn it all around by joining the French Foreign Legion. So he went in the Legion, got his act together, and then started doing videos in a French Foreign Legion uniform in the barracks, mm. doing YouTube and Instagram. The story of former Navy SEAL, French Legionnaire, that whole thing blew up on social media. So now you start, it's so much so that the, the Foreign Legion was pissed at him and told him to take everything down. And he's like, nah, dude, I got a half a million views on a video. I ain't taking anything down. So there's <laughs> a whole story that goes along with that too. But the point is that his story, all of a sudden, this dude's showing up on like Mike Drop podcast and, and all these big name podcasts, these guys are having him. And then he's branching out, not just former Navy SEAL guys having him, but his story appeals an entrepreneur. He's got guys that, you know, like spinal surgeons interviewing him on their podcast. The key ingredient is the story. Now, you got to have great content to back it up. In this case, we're talking about a book or we're talking about a course or something like that. But you got to have great content on the back end. But that passport, man, that that ticket is the story. Hmm. And you got to know how to tell your story short, medium, and long. Can you tell your story in a one-minute Instagram video? Can you tell it in a 15-second TikTok? Can you tell it in a three-minute 
Facebook live intro or can you spread that story over a half an hour as an intro to a two hour podcast? Because some of these podcasts, I don't see podcasts like five hours long, dude. Yeah, that's that's a long podcast. <laughs> that's a commitment, man. That's like a whole week of working out and listening to YouTube yeah. while you're doing it. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I don't watch movies. I mean, it, it's a commitment to watch a movie. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? I'd rather no. just sit there and read a little bit, watch maybe a half hour show. <laughs> yeah, but I bet you've binge watched stuff before. You'll watch five half hour shows in a row. That's a movie, dude. I've done that before, too. Okay. Yes. So the point of all this is that this is where the opportunity is. If you don't have a big budget to buy ads, which by the way, buying ads to just sell your book, we talked about that before is idiocy. Yeah. Okay. Advertising your book directly with an ad is dumb. If you don't have a funnel. And then the last is traffic that you own which is basically your email list, okay? Where I can, if I want to promote my book and I'm gonna do that over the weekend, I'm gonna send out an email about my new book. I'm like, hey, my new book's available. It's available for Kindle, it's available in paperback, it's available in audiobook. And I'm gonna send it out to my list and say, you know, here it is. And I'll get some sales. So same thing with social media. So that's the that's the key is that you don't want to a pity pot over the fact that oh you know I don't have any money I don't have any contacts nobody knows me okay well then if you want to promote your book you better have a dang good story about you and about the topic and about the book and then some great content to back it up so that people are like look I need to have them on my podcast I need to have them on my Facebook live I need to have them on my show yeah so there you go. Cool. So do you want to do any genie uh, demos? So have we beaten this topic to death? I think so. I mean, <laughs> okay. we, 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 books are great, but no one will know about them if you don't share more information about them. That is you true. Know, it's just, you know, it, it should be a part of your daily process. Handing out a business card, handing out a book, use a book as a business card. Creating People content. need to know that you have a book. I understand. I'm with you, man. Create yeah. that content. Share that content. Um, absolutely. Okay. So what I'd love to do is last week, I think it was, we did a bunch of uh, demos of the genies. And people were like, wow, that's cool. I didn't know you had a genie that did that. And so what I'd like to do is do a demo for you all of the paragraph genie and give me one second i'm gonna i gotta see if i can get this thing squared away give me one sec let me see if i okay. can make the camera behave so that's good if in doubt unplug it and plug it back in Let's see if that makes it start working again. Or I could have just screwed myself and we're going to go straight to the. Uh, we're going to go straight to. Nope. All right. Hang on. Hey, it worked, Stu. Awesome. You know. When when we were kids. Remember when TVs had tubes in them? I know you do, Stu, because... Sure. Okay. We call and it the tube. What were... Yeah, the idiot box, the boob tube. Um, What were the two things that you did when the picture was jacked up on, a, on an old TV? What were the two things you would do? First thing you would do is hit yeah, it on... Yeah, the yeah, you give, give it a little, give it a little smack. Give Maybe it some love. Change the channel, change it back. And it uh, worked. Mess around with the uh, antenna ears. Yeah, yeah, but it worked. You could whack the old TV and it would work. That is true. And the other thing, it was unplug it and plug it back in. Hmm. And that's just what I did. I just unplugged it and plugged it back in. That is hey, the magic stupid. That is on-off button. Stupid. Um. Okay. So what I'm gonna do? We we'll talk about uh, 
Paragraph Genie at the board for a second. I'm going to uh, take up the big screen and then we'll go do a demo of it. And, uh, and then you and I'll jump back in and talk about it. Sweet. All right. Paragraph Genie. So sometimes you just need a chunk or chunks of content on a certain topic. And you don't need an intro and you don't need a conclusion. Sometimes you just need some paragraphs on a particular topic to stick in somewhere. Maybe you need to expand the chapter of a book. Maybe you need some examples for your next newsletter. Maybe you need to expand a blog post. You just need a chunk of content. Thinking about it just like a building block of a giant Lego that you just need this to add to something else. And so that's why we created the Paragraph Genie because the Paragraph Genie allows you to write predetermined number of paragraphs around whatever it is you want to write a paragraph about. Let's go over here to the board and I'll show you how it works, or actually to the genie. So this is the paragraph genie. Let me zoom in a little bit. And how this works is you tell it the purpose of your paragraph. So in this case, I got in here, explain why these thoughts are the single most important part of using your sales stories effectively. And then I gave it a couple of thoughts. Now you can load in a bunch of stuff in here if you want, but basically step one, step two, general writing style, friendly and instructive, and then I can tell it how many paragraphs I want. So let's say I tell it two paragraphs. So I come down here, whack the button, and it's gonna write a couple paragraphs on this topic for me. It'll take it about, I don't know, 30, 40, 50, 60 seconds, depending on how long, how many paragraphs you're telling it to make for you. Then what you're gonna be able to do is once it's generated it, and it's taken a little bit longer, must be a bunch of people on there. So now what it did was it basically took my points, which I had two main points, and it said, okay, I guess I'll write a paragraph about each one of these. So I can output this as a DOCX file, or I can output it as a text file. So if I output it as a DOCX file, then it creates a file that in my case, opens in Word, open on another screen, but here are my two paragraphs and I can come in and edit these any way I want, make sure it's talking about what I want to talk about. But let's say I needed a bunch more. So without changing anything else, I can come up here and I can say, okay, how about, I mean, to heck with it. Let's write as much as you can. So now I'm gonna tell it I run 10 plus paragraphs. So whereas the first one wrote, I've got too many screens here. Um, the first one did about 233 words is what it says down there. Okay, so decent little amount of content. But now this thing did about twice as much. So it didn't do 10 paragraphs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it did seven paragraphs. So I may not have enough information up there to, to have it do that many paragraphs, but it definitely did a bunch more. And what it's gonna do is just elaborate on it a whole lot more, as opposed to when you tell it, hey, I just give me a couple paragraphs. But what you can see on this is that this is pretty much stuff that I could slam in anywhere. If I was using this to expand a newsletter, if I was doing a chapter in a book, if I was doing a free report, a lead magnet, which by the way, this works amazingly well to expand a lead magnet, a free report. Um, so when using sales stories, the most important step is crucial, crucial. For example, in a sales pitch, use a story, tying lessons directly to call to action, instance, sales pitch you can use, audience. Okay. So yeah, it's got kind of an in conclusion using sales stories effectively 
I would, depending on if this was the beginning, middle, or end of something, I might change that to be like, you know, bottom line, using sales stories effectively in any, so it, it wouldn't make them think this was the end, especially if I was sandwiching this in. But again, that's part of the process of when you use the, the genie, you're able to dictate exactly what it's writing about, how it's writing, what it covers. In fact, I created this genie at the request of one of our oldest and best customers, a lady named Sue, who was like, you know, the genie never really, or no AI talks exactly about what I want to talk about. And I realized that we needed to create a solution for the fact that the genie will, ju or not, excuse me, a chat GPT, AI in general, just kind of goes to the lowest common denominator but by helping specify exactly what you want it to write about, how you want it to write about it, how much information that you want it to, to give to you, you can control it. It injects the HI into the AI, HI being human intelligence into the artificial intelligence to help you get what you want. Because sure, you could go to ChatGPT and you could say, hey, write me something on this. And it would write you something on that. But then you'd spend an hour or two trying to get it to give you exactly what you wanted, as opposed to just using the genie, dialing it in, getting it done, and getting on with your life. So, Stu, any thoughts or questions about the paragraph genie? No, I tell you, Jim, I have used this paragraph genie more than I thought I would. <laughs> right. Right. Usually I just go with the blog post genie or the super blog post genie, especially if I'm trying to create some longer content. But I, I have found the paragraph genie to be excellent when I'm struggling with a conclusion of an article or the introduction of an article. Um, in fact, the other day I used it. There were three phases I wrote about in an article um, three phases of mental toughness I wrote about in an article a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know what? I need to expand that a little bit. And I found it and it was just three little paragraphs, put the whole thing into it. And it just created more paragraphs for me to kind of expand upon and take it to, uh, take it to another level. So what I did is I put one of those paragraphs in at a time, mm -hmm. asked for three more paragraphs, boop. Did that again, three more paragraphs, three more paragraphs. Next thing I know, I have, you know, thousand word article. Yeah, I was gonna say that yeah. I just had that I just had to, you know, put some pictures in and smooth it out, add some soul, and it was really good. Really good. Did you have Barry White playing while you were doing the soul or no? <sighs> Did not. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So that's the paragraph genie. And Love it. it can revolutionize your copy and content absolutely so Stu, what else we want to talk about today we got any questions or anything anna says i love this the paragraph genie by the way good morning anna hey vicky hey brad um just see ray's here carl's here carl says that's good the intent he was talking about when we did the other thing sorry i just saw these but um he yeah. was talking about the intonation <laughs> carl's the uh the the camera coach voice coach dude and for him to say that's good is a is a high compliment for the fake voice uh awesome um how about uh if you guys have questions send them but one thing i like about the start of this show mm -hmm. was the ongoing evolution of learning about new things that we can do and that is, I think we all have to be on a constant search for things like what Jim just shared with us with the a button on Amazon that makes your book an audio book. You know, using StreamYard or Zoom to do podcasts. You know, yep. all of these little things that can really enhance your business with minimal effort is something very much worth your time or open-mindedness 
to add to your day? So let's talk about that real quick because here's the thing. Is it a tool? Is it a bright, shiny object? Mm. Is it a squirrel? <laughs> squirrel. Or is it a game changer? Right. A revolutionary product that is going to change your business. What's the difference between all of these? Because we could be, for one person, what I just showed you there is an amazing tool. Like, hey, I'm already published my book. I can have an audio book. Go on about my day. Yes. Okay. It, it's an amazing tool because it fits with my purpose and my objective. It, it fits with my purpose of, hey, I'm publishing my books. I got my book. My purpose is to use my book to get people into my thing. And I've got a whole thing organized, my business. Is it a bright, shiny object? Well, someone goes, I'm going to show you how in 30 minutes you're able to create an entire book using ChatGPT and then turn it into an audiobook. Be a part of the multi-billion dollar industry known as, and I'm going to show you how you can do this 10 times a day. We have people that are making as much as $5,000 a day doing this. I'm, you know, I mean, you're going to see chuckleheads doing that crap. Okay, you already mm -hmm. have. They, the FTC comes down on them. <clears throat> So it's a bright, shiny object because you, you, you don't have a, an objective other than some loose thing of like, I want to make me some money. Squirrel. Hey, I heard about audiobooks. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then is it a game changer, a massive game changer? You ask the question, hey, man, can I go back and convert? all of my old books to audio books. That's a game changer. Yeah. But it's because you have a purpose and an objective clear. What you didn't say was, Hey Jim, can I go, you know, I heard that perimenopause is a really popular topic and you can make a lot of money. Let me a 56 year old male write a book that I know nothing about, about menopause. And then I'll have it turned into an audio book. That's not a game changer. That's stupid. So all these tools I talked about, you know, there's going videos coming. Video will be here. It's videos kind of here already. You can do some cool stuff with still images and other things. A year or two from now, you're going to be making your own Star Wars. Okay. But unless you have a very clear purpose and objective, that is closely tied to the audience that you are called to serve and your story resonates with both yourself and your audience and what you're offering. Unless all those things are in place, anything you see is going to be a bright, shiny object or a squirrel. Because this is the filtration system to evaluate these tools as they come along. Hey, that's kind of cool. Is that going to help me do this better, faster, cheaper? Or in the case of like the voiceover people, is that going to totally disrupt what I'm doing and I need to pivot immediately? If I was making my money with voice, which I know guys that have, and I've paid them as much as four or $500 to read something that was a minute long. Mm. Yeah, it was years ago, though. Dude. It was yeah, like 2006. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> if you don't know this, you are at the whim of big tech and AI and all the stuff that the tsunami of things that is already coming towards the shore with bigger ones coming behind it. So you better get real straight on your purpose and objective, who you're called to serve and what your story is in that whole thing, or you're, you're hosed. Just saying. That's a really good point, Jim, because I, I will tell you this. The lack of data is no longer an issue, right? You, and you have to be able to make data information that people can actually consume. Data by itself is unconsumable. Well, and I'm gonna I'm gonna ask if maybe what you're talking about is another level up from that. Because 
there's data, then there's information, which is basically data plus a structure. And then there's wisdom, which is information plus experience. This is the only thing that has any value. Information, because you're able, I, I know people that claim to be able to operate 18 or 19 different newsletters using AI and one part-time virtual assistant from the Philippines. And I'm able to plug into the multi-billion dollar newsletter industry and I'm setting up to be able to sell these things once I get, it's BS. <laughs> The only thing that you have is wisdom. And wisdom is comprised of data, information, your experience, and ultimately, back to this again, the stories that you can tell from your experience that resonate with the audience and help them to not only learn, but also become connected with you. Does that make Excellent. sense? Yes. So, Anyway, again, all roads lead to just because you can make a blog post on it don't mean that that blog post is going to do anything for you. You've got to take the AI and match it up with the HI, put the soul into it, and then you got something. Yeah. You can't have wisdom without a story. That is true. But you can have data and information without them for sure. Sure. Absolutely. <clears throat> all right. Well, I think that does it for us. I didn't see. Yeah, we're good. So I appreciate the alpha husband uh, joining us. He's in X jail. <laughs> so we have somebody actually showing up from X. Um, there you go. So, all right. Appreciate y'all. Everybody have a great day. And uh, we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye, everybody.